Hi everyone, uh, welcome to the Julia language tutorial series. Uh, we're building a small image puzzle game. Uh, during this time we will cover Julia concept and some of the useful packages. Um, thinking about the game, uh, we need some fundamentals in order to build it. Uh, we need to load an image, we need to visualize it. Uh, we will need to annotate the image and make some mark some annotate mark some metadata on it, uh, and we will need some basic editing of the image. So uh, this is what we'll cover today: um, the pretty basics of, uh, of of the images. Uh, last video we finished by um, adding some packages to our environment so uh, let's just check that we're in the correct environment and we can see the status of uh, which packages did we add uh, it may took you a, a while if it's the first time you um, ran Julia to download to uh, clone the repositories and everything um, so this is our packages we, we've got and their versions and you can uh, see this uh, so to use those packages in, in a code, we need to uh, bring them to scope, to load them to the, our cr current REPL, uh, and we'll use images, images, image, view, and test images. So for the first, uh, the using uh, keyword actually uh, reads through those packages, uh, and as we said, Julia is is a um, is a just-in-time compilation uh, uh, language, so it actually compiles the la the, the the modules, uh, or in this case, pre-compiles the modules, uh, which is running all the top-level statements in the modules. Um, so. Uh, a bit about those uh, packages. Uh, images uh, is actually um, a, a wrapper for uh, many other packages. So you can see that color types, colors, uh, image core are part of images uh, module. Uh, but uh, test images or uh, draw or image draw and others are uh, external packages which you can add to the uh, you can add, you can also add and they work with the images uh, package. I think we'll pause the video here to finish the pre-compilation. So uh, my pre-compilation pre failed. Uh, this is due, we are missing a few packages needed for the images. As I said, images uh, is a wrapper for all sorts of packages, so we will need the FFTW and also uh, image filtering, and we can bring them with add FFTW and image filtering, and we've added them. Uh, we need to build them as it was mentioned in the error, so we'll build FFTW. And now we can rerun the command for using. So uh, we finish our uh, pre-compilation of the, those packages. Uh, it took a while. Uh, for those error messages, uh, you can ignore them. They are related to some 32 and 64-bit uh, operation operating system configuration or misconfiguration. Uh, if you do know how to um, remove them, so please comment and let me know below. Next topic is uh, loading an image. So uh, let us define a new variable uh, called logo to store the image, uh, the, the logo image of Julia, which I've downloaded to uh, the downloads directory. Um, downloads Julia logo and tab completion also works. Uh, 
Uh, so for uh, Windows users, you will need to use uh, a double uh, flash uh, to escape it and also uh, mention the, the flash. Um, okay, uh, as we load the, the image, we again need to pre-compile the image magic. The image magic is the, is the um, one of the uh, IO's uh, methods for load. There's also a uh, image IO that you may use. Um, so we've loaded uh, our image uh, and Julia actually spits out uh, or execute the, the last line of code that it encounter, encountered. So uh, this is the last code it encountered. And, and this is actually what stores in logo or, or it's the representation of what's uh, stored in logo. This is the image. We, we can't visualize it yet. It's, it's, the, it's the image values. And you can see it's, it's a two dimensional array uh, um, with uh, each pixel in this two-dimensional array is of type RGBA. Um, so Julia images stores, store the image in always in a 2D array and the element type can be different. It can be an RGB, an RGBA, which is a red, green, blue and alpha channel. It can also be a 1D, uh, one element uh, of a gray scale. Um, so all of the the images are always a, a, a 2D array with a pixel in a different struct. Um, it, it may be a bit confusing for people coming from other type of languages. Uh, in my opinion, it's it, it is more um, it's the correct way to think about images. Uh, if you do want to uh, uh, spread those channels out, so uh, we can channel, we can, we can define a new uh, variable, let's say uh, channel V, which is uh, calling the channel view function on logo. Uh, we'll do it on the first three rows and three columns. Um, so this is uh, actually splitting the logo image or part of the logo image to the, those channels view. We can see we got uh, four by three by three matrix. Um, and this is like the, the, the four channels are the four color channels, the red, green, blue, and, and, uh, and the alpha channel. So if you want to, uh, see those channel in the third dimension, you can, uh, use the function of permute dims of channel V and you can define the order. So the order would be uh, uh, using Julia indexes is from one, so on. So we, we will want to uh, the first uh, uh, dimension to be the second one, then the third, and finally the first dimension here will be the third dimension in the uh, result of permute dims. Um, and we can see, so this is the three by three uh, image, the, the red channel of the three by three image. This is the green channel, uh, and this is the, the blue channel, and this is the, the alpha channel. Uh, another way of uh, extracting the different channels from the, the image is uh, calling the functions, um, calling the different red, green, uh, uh, blue functions on the image. Uh, and uh, extracting only this channel. So um, this is how it is called. Um, yeah. So and the, the, these are the red channels uh, of this uh, slice of the image. The dot here mentions uh, broadcasting. Broadcasting is uh, Julia's way to say we're performing this function on each element rather than in, on the entire array. So we're uh, getting the value per each uh, per each pixel. We can see here logo again and we can see that the, the type of each pixel, you can see the type of each, each pixel is an RGBA structure which uh, is uh, out of an N0F8 uh, type object. Um, this type object is actually a fixed, fixed point rather than a floating point uh, which means that the values are equally spread between zero and one. This um, this type of uh, uh, of a decimal number of a fixed point number is useful in avoiding the, the the numerical errors we get 
from uh, converting or casting a uint8 into um, uh, a double or a flow or other floating points. Uh, you can see some more explanation uh, under the again the Julia images um, documentation, and I'll link this uh, below so you can also judge it yourself. Um, now we would like to visualize our image because no one can understand this horrible array. Uh, we'll use the intro function to view our image. Uh, so we get the intro function, we define the view, the image we want to show, and we can also specify, this is optional, we can specify the name of the, um, the name of the window. Um, and we will assign the result to a GUIDICT. Um, this is a dictionary containing all sorts of entities about this, this, this window. Um, the, the main concept to understand about dictionaries is it's a one variable uh, holding some other variable which all are accessible by uh, uh, keys. Uh, these are the keys, these are the, the, the entities that it stores. Um, and this will be more clear as we go. So uh, for the image, you can see this is the name of the image that we gave it. And as I move the cursor around, you can see at the bottom left corner that the, the uh, cursor position changed to this the, the mouse position. And here is the value that we see for the uh, different uh, uh, positions. Um, excellent. The, the, what we can do on top of this uh, uh, image is uh, add some annotations. So uh, in order to add some annotations, we will define, we'll use the annotate function. Uh, we annotate the GUI dictionary and we can specify which kind of annotation we want to use. So I'll use the annotation text object, uh, which I need to specify the position, which is, uh, which will be uh, on the 100 column and the 30 row. Um, the text that I will print would be my name of the channel and we can specify the color to use. Uh, the color would be an RGBA, RGB object. Uh, let's say it will be red. So this is the values for a red um, pixel. And finally, the font size would be 15. I'll close both of the parentheses and we get to see this annotation uh, exactly where we defined it. The center is where we defined it. Uh, excellent. To delete this annotation, we will use the delete function. And we want to delete from the GUI dict, we want to delete this last annotation. Um, keep in mind that those excla exclamation mark um, define that we uh, are using this function on the GUI dict and not representing a new copy of this object, rather changing this copy of the object. Um, Excellent. Uh, next topic is editing the image. So um, the first thing we can think of is using slices as we used before. So we can define a rect uh, of the image uh, between, let's say, uh, 181 to 281 to 180. So this will be a 2 by 100 pixels um, square rectangle. It's useful when you, you want to take uh, a full, uh, all adjacent pixels. Um, but keep in mind that images, uh, images, is the, when you, you do a slice on an image, you actually get a copy of the image rather than uh, uh, changing the same uh, pixels. Uh, it's not a pointer as we, 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 as other packages of Julia would work for. If you want to use a pointer, which is sometimes more convenient, you would need to use the uh, view macro coming from images. And we can define something very similar. Let's just take uh, a few rows up and let's take from 100 to 120 and again from 81 to 180. So uh, this is a view object with, which is a pointer. In order to change the values in both of those, in both of those rectangles, we can use uh, again, the broadcasting, um, we'll use it like this, and we'll cast every 
uh, pixel in React CP to be a uh, blue pixel. Uh, we can do it like this. Blue pixel, excuse me, this is 001. And another way of doing it, and we'll do it to the React V object, is using the uh, syntactical sugar colorant. Uh, and we'll use magenta. So magenta is something in between those simple uh, values. Uh, and this syntax actually calls the, the, the RGB object with, with the magenta color um, in, in a more uh, explanation about the, the color. And so uh, images colors are uh, actually uh, all sorts of uh, concrete types. Uh, which are all descendant of the color on type. So in Julia, we, we have abstract types and concrete types. And for all colors, the colorant is the, is the uh, higher hierarchy um, abstract type. And the concrete types are divided here by two. For this is the uh, non-transparent and this is the transparent colors. And you can say the RGB, the gray, and all sorts of types you can use. Um, so now we can view the image uh, and we want to refresh the image here. Uh, so actually the image stored in the, in the image view is uh, uh, static. And if you want to refresh it, you can use the imshow function again with an exclamation mark. And we need to actually uh, access an object which is called a canvas. A canvas is where we draw everything um, so we can access the canvas and upload it with our new logo uh, and we will get only the magenta color rectangle. So another way of working with um, or editing values is what we call a mask. A mask can be used when it's a non-adjacent pixels or we want to uh, address some uh, conditionals. So uh, in this case I want to capture the blue and purple dot so I want uh, I will do it using uh, an end between two conditions. So I, um, in my opinion, the uh, blue and purple dot are dominated by their blue channel and all other channels are rather small. Uh, keep in mind that the white is dominated by all channels. So um, we will write this um, term here, uh, which says that I want the blue channel to be rather high. So I'm calling the blue on each pixel in logo and want each pixel to be higher than 0 0.7. I'm, it's a, it's a, again a broadcasting OR. Uh, and again, we would want to our red channel to be rather low. So in a really similar way, we're just defining this. So this, this define a high blue channel and a low red channel for each pixel. We can see we've got the same size as the image, uh, two, uh, 208 by 370 pixels bit array. Uh, this bit array represents uh, uh, the mask, which one is where the mask is active, zero is where the mask is inactive. Um, and we can use this mask to edit the colors of the image. So we can go to logo and edit all pixels under the mask and maybe change them to yellow. Uh, and we can change them to yellow. Um, and if we'll update the image once again, you can see that those pixels are changed to yellow. Um, so this is a, a nice way to capture uh, a non-adjacent areas in the, in the image. Uh, you can also view those uh, pixels in another nice way. Uh, I will use the find all, find all finds all elements higher then or not zero in an array. So if I find all elements that are not zero in mask, I will get a list of 708 pixels. Uh, and actually I'll get their uh, positions, their Cartesian index position in the image. Uh, and I can also work with logo of LL if I would want to. Uh, okay, so I think we covered all that we uh, defined. Uh, uh, those are very simple mani uh, manipulation on the image uh, and this will be enough for us to go to the next topic, uh, which will be how to create our opening view for the image, uh, for the game. Um, and we will use functions uh, for that. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. Please comment below and let me know what you think so I can improve the content of those videos for, uh, 
for the future. Thank you very much.